Hey guys, it's me Tiffany from Bless Bears and I thought it would be a good time to just have a sit down with you, a life update, and let you know what's been going on. So let's see. We, I'll just cut to the chase and then we'll talk about some other things. So we just had our third baby loss in a 13 month period. I would say in a year, but that's not really technically true. Um, we had one last March. It was a very early loss and it wasn't that out of the ordinary for me because throughout having all these living babies, I have had some losses, um, but not this much, not like this. So normally if I get progesterone, um, like a prescription of progesterone from my doctor, almost every other time until recently, those kids have always lived. Some of you don't know the backstory for my husband and I, but we weren't supposed to be able to have kids. PCOS really, really bad. I only have one ovary and I've dealt with all kinds of like physical things, health issues, but through that hard time, I have discovered natural medicine, which I attribute to God. And um, natural medicine has helped me far more than traditionally like the medical route, like the mainstream Western type of medicine. Like if you go to the doctor and get a prescription for pills and stuff, usually those kind of things have always caused my body harm. Okay, I had a little interruption there. But like, even like, <laughs> even things as simple as an antibiotic has done you know, like negative things to my body. So throughout time, I have a, um, a good relationship with my OBGYN. I have a lot of respect for them as people, but as far as like the system in general, I don't have much respect for. So I feel like I've kind of had to take my health in my own hands. And when I've done that every single time, I've lost weight. Um, I've just, good things have happened. So everyone knows, and sorry if you hear kids in the background, everyone knows that these last two years have been hard on us all for different reasons. Um, before, before that, I had a lot of life things happen that I would say would be very severe. Um, it started 13 years ago when I, we had a stillbirth and I call it a stillborn. Some people might call it a miscarriage. I gave birth to her, so, you know, maybe that's the wrong terminology. She was at 18 weeks along. Anyways, my point is that kind of started this spiral of a lot of hard things that happened in my life. I'm not gonna go into all the details of them, but it was a lot of things. And then another huge thing happened three years ago where my grandma, who I was extremely cl close with, she passed away. And so what I'm getting at is I feel like stress has really done a lot of damage to my body and specifically my thyroid and my adrenals and things like that. So had the one loss in March, I yes was sad about it. It wasn't as devastating as now I feel like things are. So then um, I'm like, okay, well, you know, we had a loss. I usually will have like, usually like one loss in between each living kid. And some people are like, oh, you know, there's all kinds of opinions. There's all kinds of opinions and I get it. And I understand that you guys don't understand everything where I'm coming from. I have a difference of opinion about the maker of life and how we should give God that, I don't know, that decision-making process or whatever. But I'm also not saying like, if there was like some major terrible things and it was like life and death and it was really severe, I'm smart enough to know that God also gave us a brain to make the right choices too. So anyways, so then we had a loss in October, ironically on the National Pregnancy Loss Day. So like that has a whole new ouch in it for me because it was hard enough to go through the Gabriella thing. The loss in October was so hard because we saw a baby, we saw a heartbeat and then it passed away. So that was like really traumatic and it kind of opened up some wounds from when I lost Gabriella. So that was really, really hard. So I went through some faith things. I have a video about my faith in God. I went through some things in the, in the meantime in between all of my like statements of faith. I went through some things that were not like, you know, y'all might not think that I'm just this wonderful Christian. I was very angry at God. I had a lot of questions for him. And honestly, and I kind of went through that again. I'm like, really? Again? So I find out that I'm pregnant um, last week. Yeah, a little bit over a week ago. Happy, but really scared. And Stephen was happy. We decided not to tell the little kids because they cried their eyes out this last time in October. So we were going to wait until I made it to like 12 or 13 weeks and then let them know. I wanted to make sure that there was for sure like a fully formed growing at the correct, you know, measurements baby going on before I said anything to my little kids. So I did tell my big kids because there's just certain things that, you know, I wanted to kind of um, like just precautions and things. So anyways, and then a few days later I started um, and I was immediately put on progesterone 
by my doctor, which they're really good about that. Um, I went to infertility specialist years ago after I had the stillbirth because after I had the stillbirth, we had infertility. And so altogether, it was a four year period of a lot of grief, a lot of infertility. And Stephen and I had to do different things. We did IUIs and stuff like that. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. It's not fun. But anyway, so, and the doctors told us 13, well, no, 11 years ago, that basically you have unexplained secondary infertility and your only hope, basically, if you want to have any more, is to do IVF. And um, I felt in my heart at that time that it wasn't for me. And so we just sort of, um, and so that's a good thing, you know. So and throughout these hard times, I realize I'm very blessed. I realize having nine kids is a huge blessing. So honored to be their mom. You guys don't see all of the things. You don't hear my thoughts. And I say this because some people will say things like, well, just be thankful for what you have. I'm very thankful for what I have. But Landon would not erase Kennedy and Leland would not erase Roman. Like one kid and being thankful for one kid does not erase the pain of losing another one. It would kind of be like me, like if say your grandpa passed away, it would be like me saying, well, be thankful you have another living grandpa. Like don't grieve, you have another one. Why are you crying you have another grandpa? That's just an example of how I think that those words Sometimes we mean well, but it can be very hurtful because most people who aren't like narcissistic sociopaths are thankful and grateful for what they have in life. So yes, I'm very thankful. I'm very blown away that God gave me the kids that he did, but it's still very painful. So anyways, back to my story. <laughs> So, um, immediately got started on progesterone and then I started feeling kind of different, um, like not as strong pregnancy symptoms, but in the past I've had some where I feel really, really sick. Sometimes it goes away, you know, it varies. All the kids are so different. All the pregnancies have been pretty different, I guess. So I tried not to worry about it, but I took, I kept taking pregnancy tests and usually that, that test line should start getting darker and darker because your body builds up more <clears throat> of a chemical called HCG. So I called my doctor. I said, my tests are getting lighter. I think we're going to have a miscarriage. It's just my gut feeling. And so I went in and had blood work and yeah, the HCG was pretty low. And yeah, so this week I'm going through the whole early miscarriage. Um, I cried really, really hard because it's just like, you just, you just think in your mind, you know, not everyone gets a rainbow baby. Now I did with Leland and some of my other kids, I had losses in between them. And I realized like Leland, Benjamin, I mean, a lot of kids wouldn't be here had I not had those other losses. And it's a weird thing to think about. It's totally weird. I'm glad I didn't have to make the choice of what kid stayed and what kid went. Um, God did that for me. And I love my kids that are here on this earth with me, but my heart still hurts. So that's where I'm at. Um, I've cried enough. I was numb for a few days and today the emotions are hitting me kind of hard about just multiple things. But I want to say something. So when I kind of started talking about the medical stuff, I guess the update is to let you know that like I have made a choice in the past to like watch the news and I've already talked to you guys about this before. Listen to people's opinions, talk about how good or bad the president is of this country, that country, our country, you know, like all these political things and that kind of stuff takes my peace. My body is going through some things. I believe it's my thyroid. I looked at my levels and they're really not that good. Um, according to medical standards, they're in the normal range. But when I was really feeling well and, and having all these babies and just feeling vibrant and healthy, my levels were like a one and now they're like 2.52 or something like that. And so anyways... I realize that something is going on and I've looked into some different reasons for it. And so I'm just doing things on my side that I can for my health, not just for like baby, you know, having baby reasons, but for my health, because I need to be here for my living kids, right? And my husband and everybody. So um, anyways, I started going to a chiropractor and he doesn't know me that well. I've brought the kids to him for different reasons throughout the years and he's a great one. And I asked him about these different things and I don't know if he like discerned whatever about me. I didn't tell, tell him anything about the loss, the miscarriage, because I don't know. <laughs> My, uh, Michael was there getting his back adjusted too and I didn't really feel like I had to share it anyways. But... Um, my neck and stuff has been off my head. Like I've, I've had a lot of pain and headaches and stuff. So I was asking him like, why are we having all these things with our bodies? Like as far as society in general, and he thinks a lot of it is stress. Um, and so, yeah. So when he said that, it kind of hit me hard, like, cause I feel like it's true. 
it's been a lot of stress. Anyways, I could write a book, but you know, God is here with me. And even though things have been very difficult, painful for a long time now, even though I don't feel like he was here with me. And I was, when I was in my hardest emotional time last week, I was so mad. I was so mad. I have a sign in my house that says like he does all these miracles and stuff. And I was so mad because I was like, no, you don't. You don't do that anymore. Like you have, you know, kind of how Jesus felt when he was on that cross. God, you have forsaken me. Um, these times let me, they're, they're healing. Um, and I know that sounds crazy to say I'm still hurting, but he's teaching me more about him and what he's been through. And, you know, he went through a lot of these same feelings, like feeling like, God, it, like, where is God? <laughs> um, why would you let this happen? And I know we all have these thoughts, you know, like, why does he let these things happen? And I have my answers and I'm not here to preach at you guys. And so I'm not going to be talking about that today, but it's just been, it's opened my eyes up to, you know, to be honest, I used to think the atheists were like, dumb people. And now I'm like, I can see why people don't choose to believe um, when it comes to like deep pain and hurt because you think, my gosh, like what, you know, I know I, I am, I have fallen short. I'm not like, you know, to the level of God at all, but like, why would you allow this to happen? Like why? Um, and I don't have those answers. And if I did, I, I would be as smart as God because he's the only one that really knows these things. And so I have accepted that I just won't, I don't know right now. I may not ever know why all these terrible things happen to people. I do know that I asked him one time and he said, the ground is cursed. And when Adam and Eve fell, um, they chose to disobey you know, God cursed the ground. He was angry. And, um, so this world is beautiful and wonderful and huge. And I'm so blessed to have friends and have you guys and have support. But at the same time, there's hard things that happen too. And it kind of made sense to me. Like, it's just, it's just a situation we're in. We're in this world and it's not perfect. And so hard things happen. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, but God, I can only handle so much. Going through these times again and again and again. Um, this time, knock on wood, I've done a lot better. Like you got to get out of the bed. You have to get up and you have to live for the living. And that's in the Bible too. It is. Um, we should grieve. And I, I grieved very hard and I'll continue to grieve. Um, but I can't just make a choice and just lay in that bed and cry and and live a life of thinking that something is going to change if I don't change it. So anyways, um, so I blessed myself with going to the chiropractor once a week now, getting my body back in line. Michael's going and getting his hips and everything adjusted. I'm just kind of taking care of my body. I'm on something called Whole30, where you only eat whole foods for 30 days. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of going by it. I have been weighing myself though. You're not supposed to for 30 days, but that's not going to happen. So anyways, but I've been doing that and today's just day three of it. So I've not been into it for that long, but, um, you know, I can control only so much stress and messes with our, our hormones and our thyroids and just everything that happens with our body is so related to stress. So I kind of, I'm staying off of Instagram and Facebook. And honestly, when I started YouTube, I only did YouTube. I didn't have those things and I could devote more of my heart into the channel. I really prefer this method of talking to people and reaching out more than the others. Um, because my main job right now is to be a mom and to manage this family. So, and obviously I love documenting our life and everything. So I'm kind of refocusing back onto less things so I can pour more of me into less things. So a higher quality of choices that I'm making instead of watering myself out thin. Um, and, and also it's kind of hard, like it's kind of hard to sit there and, and log on to something and see all these pregnancy announcements. And I know that might sound terrible. I am happy for my friends that are pregnant, but if I don't focus on the reality of what's happened, like I know that I've had a baby loss, but if I sit there and think about it all day, I will cry and I will get nothing accomplished. And so it's not that I'm not happy for my friends because I have a lot of living kids and I'm sure I've had some pregnancies where other people have been bawling their eyes out and had losses or infertility fertility. So I'm not ignorant of that. But for my just mental whatever right now, I just need to cut those things out. So I am not being reminded and get all in that emotional state. So anyways, um, so yeah, chiropractic, whole 30 eating. Um, I really want to lose 30 pounds. I really, I need to lose Oh, it's more like 35 pounds, but, um, I know that I can do it. I know that I will feel better and 
you know, I have been trying to do this for a long time and things keep happening and I would stop and I feel like, okay, Tiffany, it's time to uh, go further than you have before. You can do this. You know, this is me talking to myself. I can do this. Like if other people can do it, why could I not do this? Um, I think it will be healing to my thyroid, obviously to eat better and to lose weight. So it's proven when you have more fat in your body, our fat holds in toxins. That's just God's way of protecting our organs and stuff from all those toxins that actually bad stuff goes into our fat cells. <laughs> it's weird. And so if I'm losing weight, aka fat, um, I'll probably feel better in the long run, obviously. And so, yeah, so I'm just, I'm, I'm working on all that. We are working on our house. We're remodeling again. Um, Steven was working on our bathroom. It's not finished yet, but I will show you the progress. It should be finished soon. Um, we've talked about doing some different things to our kitchen, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then our washer and dryer went out. You guys know that I have two sets of washers and dryers. So one dryer went out. Steven was insistent that I bought a new one. Well, my other one's not like in bad shape. It just needs some parts. So now I think we're going to move my laundry room into the family closet, rearrange a bunch of stuff, move out the, um, I have like a big freezer and like a small refrigerator in the family closet. And so I'm going to be moving, well, not right now, but soon upcoming, we're going to be moving sort of things around and it's going to be so much work for Steven. Oh my gosh. Um, Steven's also been doing a lot of work. He has his normal job that he's done for 12 years, I guess. It's in law enforcement, okay? So I just don't share a whole lot because, you know. So he does that full time and at night. And then during the day, he does heating and cooling. And we just started in October. And so, and we started literally the week of my miscarriage, my middle miscarriage. And so if that gives you any idea of how stressful it's been, it is so hard to start a business, especially heating and cooling because you have to have so many tools so many parts because everyone has different brands and types of heating and cooling units for their home. We've spent so much money on tools, it's insane. So we, we're not like in this big profit margin part of life, but God is blessing us um, more than I thought, like more than I imagined would be going on just starting out because usually it's really, really hard to get jobs and we've had a lot of jobs coming in. So he's doing that. He's also doing some other remodels. In addition, like he has like a small crew. And so when he's not putting in the heating and the cooling stuff, he's helping do remodels on other places too. So he's so busy. It's the most busy, insane time of our life ever. Like it's crazy. Um, Sadly, I'm used to not seeing him much and I hate that. And he'll say, I miss you. And I'm like, I miss you too. And I'm used to it now. And he's like, well, I'm not used to it. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to mean it like in a bad way, but I'm literally just used to it. Like, I don't know, it's rough. We have to do this because he can't just quit the first job because this is not like a, you know, a lot of people don't know about our heating and cooling business yet. So it takes time to build up. So this is like a really, really rough, stressful time in life for us all. So your prayers are so appreciated for God to keep bringing in the heating and cooling jobs, um, to give him clarity about the other job, um, that eventually I think he probably won't stay with because they have not treated him very kindly. When you're there and you're loyal and you've been a hard worker and then they do things that we feel like are not right, um, you gotta do what you gotta do. But it's still hard because that's been, it's not his identity, but that's what he's done and who he's associated with. And he has lots of friends at this other job, you know, like coworkers that, it's like a brotherhood. They all wanna protect each other and keep each other safe. And anyways, I'm kind of babbling, but there's just so many emotions and things going on. Loss, um, shock, stress to the max. And in the middle of this, we have to make meals, cook, clean, take kids to softball, hug them, kiss their boo-boos, and try to hold myself together. I told you I'm not going to cry. So my strength is in God. Um, again, I'm not saying this from like a place of ignorance. Um, I have felt very like, where are you? Where are you? I know logically he is... He told us he would be there with us. Sometimes there's, I hate the saying, the teacher's quiet during the test. Like if we go in and we're in school, the teacher sits down and they want to see what we know and what we're going to do, right? And then, you know, we either pass or fail. I don't know if I've passed or failed this because I've definitely not said kind words to God. I've just been very real with him. Um, he knows my thoughts anyway, so why think something that I'm really mad about and then pray to him all 
mushy gushy. I'm respectful and reverent because he's God. So anyways, as I was saying, I'm <clears throat> reverent of God. I realize he's God, but at the same time, I'm not gonna put on a show to God because he already knows how I'm feeling. So anyways, this is kind of stretched out to be pretty long, but um, so yeah, lots of lots of things that are going on. I'm trying to pull myself up by my bootstraps. Been gardening or trying to garden. Um, taking the kids to ball practice. That's been fun. And all these things are great that we're getting into a busy season. I'm also really excited that the sun's starting to come out and it's starting to be uh, warmer out. Honestly, I feel like a lot of my health issues that I have suffered with are due to not having enough vitamin D. And I've told Steve and I'm like, if we could move our business to Florida, I'm telling you guys, I would move in a heartbeat. I would 100% move to Florida. Some people are like, oh, I don't like the heat. I feel amazing in hot weather. I feel like there is a extra energy of life in me in the spring and summer and early fall that there is not in the winter. And I know it has to be vitamin D. Um, you know, being out in the sun produces all of that. I really would move if we could, but that would be so hard to like start a new business there. But there is a great economy in Florida. I have loud screaming kids in the background. <laughs> okay, hold on. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up, but yeah, I would totally move if we could. If we could make it work. The prices of homes right now are like insane though. We would have to have like, I don't know, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars to build or to, to buy a house in Florida right now that would like it give us like one acre and a decent home. So not really realistic at the moment. But anyway, so I appreciate your guys' prayers. Like I said, I feel like I'm repeating myself. I've had so many interruptions with this video, but I'm just gonna shoot it out. This is what it is. But please pray for my big kids who do realize what's going on. They're dealing with sadness about it. Everyone was kind of excited. Um, please pray for Steven and his heart and his mind right now because he is so bogged down with stress from doing all of the jobs to make it work. It's just, it's a lot on him. Um, and of course, sorry, Ellie's screaming. That girl is so sassy. I'm telling you what, she's constantly telling someone how they're doing something wrong. But anyways, I'm just gonna keep talking. Maybe not. Now it's Roman screaming. I'll be right back. Sorry. Anyways, Roman and Ellie, they are buttonheads and they're fighting over like legit. It's a big deal to them, but yeah. Anyways, and then of course me, I'm in the past when hard things happen, I kind of just get in this like, I don't know, like you feel like you're paralyzed. Like you just can't move on but we have to move on. Not that it, I'm gonna pretend like it didn't happen. I very much am aware of what's happened, obviously. But I just find when I dwell upon things, it makes it really miserable. So anyways, if you do watch or follow or whatever it's called on Instagram, I am taking a long break, but I will be posting here obviously on YouTube. And I hope to do more often, but I just was not in a place last week. It's been a week now since I've known pretty much about the impending loss and I cried so much last week that you couldn't even recognize me my eyes like when I cry my eyes swell up like ridiculous like it looks like it looks like that it's ridiculous it was so bad to where I couldn't hardly even like keep my eyes open I cried so much <laughs> and Landon had to take Benjamin and Leland to the baseball practice. I texted the coach and I'm like, I'm really sorry. I'm going through a miscarriage and I just look like I can't even open my eyes hardly from crying. And I feel terrible because I'm the kind of mom that has to be there, but I'm sending my oldest son for this one. And he understood. And so I'm glad that there's caring, understanding people that are not judgmental. So anyways, I realize that some of you don't, you know, a, some few of you who watch us don't agree with whatever. Um, having so many kids. We're not living off the government. Um, I'm not like 50 years old, I'm not even 40. And so, you know, you might think, well, um, this is a sign you should have no more kids. That was said to me when I had the stillbirth when I lost Gabriella. And that was a bold faced lie because I had six more living kids after that. So if you don't have anything nice to say, just, you know, if you don't like large families and don't watch us because that's what we're about. And I didn't search out and try to live this life on purpose. This is the life God has set forth for us. So if you hate it and it repulses you, I get it. Cause I actually used to, when I first saw the Duggars on TV, I thought that was the most wackadoo crazy family ever. I did. I was repulsed. I remember having a repulsed feeling when I saw their show. Um, so it's easy to judge people that you don't know. It's easy to judge me because you only see a few minutes of the multiple hours of life that I'm living. And this goes the same towards you guys. So anyways, you know, I'm not the kind of YouTube mom where I'm really soft and kind and 
my reactions to people. I'm in a place now in life where I'm tired of being too nice and being taken advantage of. So I'm just, I will delete comments that are unkind. So as simple as that. Um, but anyways, so yeah. And I hate to say that because most of you, 99% of you are the sweetest, most caring, loving people ever. I have other friends that have YouTube channels and they get so much ugliness and it's like, if you don't like a large family, why would you watch? It makes no sense to me. Like I do not like certain things. Like, let me think of something that would not appeal to me. Let's say wood burning. Okay. Let's say that I didn't like wood burning and I was, it was not interesting to me at all. Right. Okay, let's say instead I like, I'm just making up a craft, okay? So it's not getting all political or weird or whatever. Let's say I really like surfing. Common sense is I wouldn't go over to woodworking channels and watch them and be disgusted. Instead, I would go find something that I liked and I would go watch surfing channels. You know what I mean? That's my point. If we're not your cup of tea, thousands of other channels on YouTube of people that have one kid. Or people that think that you should have no kids. There's just so many different families of different faiths. So if you don't like us, that's okay. I, it really is okay with me. I get it because I don't get along with everyone either. There's just certain personalities that mesh well. So but anyways, for those that do watch us and want to watch us and love us, I want to tell you I truly appreciate deeply when you comment and your prayers and your kindness. That's when I'm saying, God, where are you? That's when God shows up. So... Thank you for that. Thank you for being literally the hands and feet of Christ. I'm going to go to the doctor today. They called me and I didn't really want to go see him. Um, my doctor called me in and wants to see me and figure out what's going on. So if you could pray about that, that God would either give me peace to just be done and this is it and just embrace Ellie and super, super spoil her more than she's already spoiled as the baby, you know, the last one possibly and give me peace if that's really what is really it for us. Um, I've asked him to remove that desire from me multiple times and he's not yet. So, but I can't do this again and again. Like you can't control what happens to you. But again, like I said, there's certain logical things. God gave us a brain and I'm smart enough to know if he gives me the feeling that it's over and we shouldn't have any more kids and this is it. Obviously I'm gonna listen to God because he in the end <laughs> knows what's best for all of us. So, all right. I've babbled on long enough. I love you guys. I will see you on the next one.